This is a brief summary of solar system formation involving the nebular contraction theory and the condensation theory. Recall that we need to explain the observed properties of planets and their orbits as they are today. We start with a giant interstellar molecular cloud. These are vast clouds measured in dozens to hundreds of light years across, made mostly of hydrogen and helium, but also some condensed matter molecules of compounds and dust. This stuff is not very dense. It is in fact better vacuum than most laboratories are capable of producing on Earth. But through light years of distance, the total mass adds up to several hundred solar masses. The cloud starts to contract under gravity and fragments into smaller clouds. As the clouds collapse, because of their inherent angular momentum, they will start rotating. The tighter the cloud becomes, the faster it rotates. This is similar to the spin of an ice skater. As an ice skater starts their spin and then brings in their arm, the spin rate increases. For our spinning cloud, any particle along the rotational axis will have very little velocity and will fall right into the center. Material in the plane of the disk will be moving faster and will be prevented from falling in. This results in the overall disk shape of the newly forming solar system. Notice this will help explain why our solar system has a generally consistent plane and why all the planets orbit in the same direction. We do have observational evidence of this theory as we have observed around newly formed stars dark disks that are dominated by obscuring dust. Now that we have a disk, we still need to form the planets. For that, we need to understand condensation. Condensed material like liquids and solids is cohesive. This happens at low temperatures. 
if we raise the temperature, then the molecules will dissociate from other molecules and we get a gas. A gas cannot form the basis of planets because the molecules will not stick together. In the newly forming solar system, we've had the solar nebula. This was the disk that was formed from the nebular contraction. It was a mixture of material, mostly hydrogen and helium gases, volatiles such as water ice and ammonia, collectively referred to as ices, as well as material involving heavier elements that we know mostly as rocks or metal. As the sun formed at the center of our solar system, it heated up its central regions near it. All volatiles were evaporated and only rocks remained in condensed form. farther from the sun, beyond what is known as the frost line, both the rocks and the ices could remain in condensed form and stick together to form protoplanetary cores. Close to the sun, therefore, only the small amount of rocky material could form planets. This is where the rocky, small, terrestrial planets formed. Any remaining gas was then swept away by the solar wind. Farther away, beyond the frost line, where both rocks and ices remained condensed, stuck together, and formed much larger planetary cores, the protoplanets now had enough gravity to gravitationally start pulling in hydrogen and helium, and hence form the giant planets. This is why we observe small rocky terrestrial planets close to the sun and low density giant planets far away from the sun.